four great Americans, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Daniel Webster, Abraham Lincoln, a book for young Americans by James Baldwin. Contents, the story of George Washington in 15 chapters. George Washington, chapter one, when Washington was a boy. When George Washington was a boy, there was no United States. The land was here, just as it is now, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific, but nearly all of it was wild and unknown. Between the Atlantic Ocean and the Allegheny Mountains, there were 13 colonies or great settlements. The most of the people who lived in these colonies were English people, were the children of English people. And so the King of England made their laws and appointed their governors. The newest of the colonies was Georgia, which was settled the year after George Washington was born. The oldest colony was Virginia, which had been settled 125 years. It was also the richest colony and more people were living in it than in any other. There were only two or three towns in Virginia at the time, and they were quite small. Most of the people lived on farms or on big plantations where they raised whatever they needed to eat. They also raised tobacco, which they sent to England to be sold. The farms or plantations were often far apart with stretches of thick woods between them. Nearly everyone was close to a river or some other large body of water, for there are many rivers in Virginia. There were no roads such as we have nowadays, but only paths through the woods. When people wanted to travel from place to place, they had to go on foot or on horseback or in small boats. A few of the rich men who lived on the big plantations had coaches, and now and then they would drive out in grand style behind four or six horses with a fine array of servants and outriders following them. But they could not drive far where there were no roads, and we can hardly understand how they could get any pleasure out of it. Nearly all the work on the plantations was done by slaves. Ships had been bringing Negroes from Africa for more than a hundred years, and now nearly half the people in Virginia were blacks. Very often, also poor white men from England were sold as slaves for a few years in order to pay for their passage across the ocean. When their freedom was given to them, they continued to work at whatever they could find to do, or they cleared small farms in the woods for themselves or went farther to the west and became woodsmen and hunters. There was but very little money in Virginia at that time, and indeed there was not much use for it, for what could be done with money where there were no shops worth speaking of and no stores and nothing to buy. The common people raised flax and wool and wove their own cloth, and they made their own tools and furniture. The rich people did the same, but for their better or finer goods, they sent to England. For you must know that in all this country, there were no great mills for spinning and weaving as there are now. There were no factories of any kind. There were no foundries where iron could be melted and shaped into all kinds of useful and beautiful things. When George Washington was a boy, the world was not much like it is now. 